Hello and welcome to Uniform Health, the fitness channel that takes a holistic approach to diet and exercise. So today I'm going to talk about DOMS, or Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness, aka fuck you. <laughs> um, now I'm going to talk about the cause of DOMS. I'm not going to. I'm going to save another video later for prevention and treatment. So the cause of DOMS. A lot of people will say that exercises or exercise causes DOMS. Um, scientists will say, some kinesiologists will say that eccentric exercises most specifically will cause DOMS. And then other people will say, well, muscle damage causes DOMS. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to find the source of DOMS, basically. So basically, no matter what co-founding factors, you will get DOMS and or will not get DOMS if you inhibit this said molecule or pathway. So, basically what I want to do is saying, alright, so what is, we, we know that eccentric exercises is a very strong proponent for inducing uh, DOMS. So a lot of kinesiologists will have a, a group and they'll make them run downhill and because the eccentric component of that, you know, that slowing down component as long while you're running downhill, that uh, uh, causes an eccentric contraction uh, under tension in the quadricep, and that will induce DOMS. So we know that eccentric exercises are very good for inducing muscle damage. So now we could say that muscle damage is a source of DOMS. But what is that muscle damage telling the nerve endings? Because in the end, that's what we're concerned about. That's the only way we can, as far as I know of, <laughs> that's the only way we can perceive pain or signals to our body is through uh, nerve endings. So whatever these components are that as a result of muscle damage, they're doing something to the nerve ending. So what has been shown is IL-6 has been elevated, and that can actually increase the proliferation of nerve growth factor. So nerve growth factor is the pivotal cause of DOMS. So you could have a lot a lot of the, the associated factors, like if you have intensive swelling, that actually upregulates bridokine, which influences the upregulation of nerve growth factor. The IL-6, one of the most pivotal uh, cytokines released uh, in muscle exercise or er, in uh, muscle damage or exercising, that's upregulated and that upregulates um, uh, nerve growth factor. pH changes and stuff, I'm not too sure of. I know that they will influence inflammation and likely uh, have a uh, upregulation effect on probably uh, IL-6, which would then upregulate uh, nerve growth factor, but I don't know specifically how pH changes influence uh, nerve growth factor. So, what I say there, that was a lot of information, but what I'm saying is, is that you can do a lot of things and not get DOMS. So you could do, you could get really big bulgy muscles and maybe uh, like from uh, doing like get a big pump going on and maybe not get DOMS but what you can't do is you can't upregulate nerve growth factor and not get DOMS you can't get DOMS and not have upregulated ner nerve growth factor now when I say nerve growth factor it's not it's a basically a, a pathway so think of it like this think of it as nerve growth factor is the truck. And what is happening is that blocking the trunk is a pivotal part about of blocking nerve growth, uh, of blocking DOMS. But beyond that trunk are branches and possibly blocking a more specific part of these branches would result in more specific uh, relief from DOMS, but the end result is, is still this. I'm still saying the correct statement, I believe, in saying that blocking nerve growth factor will not uh, let you 
get DOMS. That is a probably a bad thing, in fact. Now, what happens when you when you get nerve growth factor induced is that you're you're repairing and reorganizing uh, nerve endings that have been damaged in other or that need growing, and the more nerve endings, neural, the more neurological connections you make, the stronger you can get because the more you can continually activate your uh, muscle tissue, and that's what's going to be pivotal for obviously strength. So. What I want to say is this, though, is that there's a lot of different ways you can increase nerve growth factor through exercise. So you can get, like I said before, you can get a, a pump going on. You can do a lot of eccentric exercises. You could even try and do things like completely not work out because that could end up resulting in upregulations of nerve growth factor. And then you could also do things like starve yourself from protein. You could do a lot of bad things that would have an upregulation effect that's sort of combating this, these negative influences. But on the other hand, you could do a lot of good things that will also upregulate it. But at the same time, your body's going to do what? It's going to adapt. And that's what, um, that's what the repeated bout effect is. It's an adaption. So it downregulates nerve growth factor. And so now you're thinking, well shit, if nerve growth factor is essential for me getting stronger, or possibly an essential component for me getting stronger through its neurological growth, I want to upregulate nerve growth factor. But I want to slow you down because you want to make sure that whenever you're upregulating something, you know exactly what you're doing because if you're trying to get growth, rapid growth in anything, you could potentially show yourself into the doors of cancer, basically. You're going to open up those doors and end up in a state of cancer, carcinogenic nature. So, where is this repeated about effect occurring? So, basically, I talked about that you have the bridokine, and then you also have this IL-6. What is, are you be having less IL-6? Are we having more, or less bridokine? What, what is happening that is causing the downregulation of nerve growth factor. And what's shown is that it's not it's not IL six and it's not bridokine. It's actually further up in a different superfamily of molecules. So I don't know exactly the adaptive nature of which is occurring from um, from doing exercise from this repeated about effect, but it's in a super family that I can't remember the name of, but I will post. So basically, what I wanted to say is that you shouldn't say that eccentric exercises causes DOMS. You shouldn't say that muscle damage causes DOMS. You shouldn't say that changes in lactic acid cause DOMS. What you should be saying because it is a neurological issue, because you're perceiving pain, it is an overexpression, or is the expression of nerve growth, fa nerve growth factor. Sorry, the video cut out. But basically what I was saying is that nerve growth factor is the, the end-all be-all. But what I forgot to mention is that how nerve growth factor actually stim or causes um, nerve firing. So basically, that's what's happening is that our nerve endings are firing more frequently. And um, why that's happening is actually that nerve growth factor is acting on nerve endings in such a way that it's decreasing the, the threshold by which those nerve endings fire. So your nerve endings work by a sodium-potassium gradient, um, and that, that causes voltage, basically. And what's happening is nerve growth factor is acting on, I'm not sure exactly how, is acting on the nerve ending, decreasing this, the, the threshold, and the, because the decreased threshold is so much less, anything will stimulate that, um, that impulse to be sent to the brain. And that's why nerve growth factor increases uh, sensitivity of the muscle and causes increased pain. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I got that treatment video coming out soon, um, and I want to give a big thank you out to those 36 subscribers. Don't forget to have a great day.